What's up y'all, Coach John here at CrossFit Liberate. I have another at-home workout for you. Today is Thursday, October 22nd, and this workout is called Spin Move. So all body weight movements today in this longer piece that we're working on. We're gonna complete some longer runs and some indoor work. And with the constant rotation of movements, we're gonna hopefully be able to continue to make good forward progress throughout this workout. And then we expect this workout to take somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 to 30 total minutes. All right, getting into our warm-up for spin move. Let's start off with a 200 meter easy jog. Then we'll go into two rounds, 30 seconds each, starting with shoulder taps. Hopping up into some classic jumping jacks. Back to the floor for push-ups to down dog. Then we'll hit some line hops or single unders here. And then finally up dog stretch, keeping those arms long, shoulders shrugged down, and pushing that waistband to the floor. For mobility today, let's go one minute per side of a prone pec stretch. and then 40 seconds on each side of a calf stretch on a post or door jam. All right, let's take a close look at spin move. So this is four time, starting with an 800 meter run, then three rounds of 50 line hops, 25 sit-ups, 15 push-ups, another 800 meter run, then three rounds of 50 line hops, 25 sit-ups, and 15 push-ups and finishing with one more 800 meter run. So body weight movements dominate this longer conditioning piece. The constant rotation of movements should hopefully allow for steady forward progress here. After finishing the initial 800 meter run, you'll complete all three rounds of the 50, 25, 15 before running again. You'll follow this flow for the remainder of the workout. We expect this longer piece to take between 25 to 35 minutes to complete. On your runs, let's aim for a four to five minute effort here. Decrease the distance or choose a substitute in the video description below that allows for a two minute effort across the duration of the workout. With your line hops, choose a rep number or variation that allows you to clear this set in right around a minute. It's a good day to use a jump rope if you have one and complete single or double unders. For your sit-ups, choose a number that allows you to complete the station in about 75 seconds. Complete these with legs straight or with feet anchored under a heavy object like a couch or a cabinet. And finally, with your push-ups, Choose a rep number or variation that ideally allows you to finish each round in three sets. Reduce the number or elevate the hands as needed to meet this recommendation. Ensure that the chest makes contact in the bottom and the elbows reach full extension at the top. And as always, further movement subs and modifications are in the video description below. All right, let's take a close look at our movements here, starting with our line hops. Let's think about the hips here. We can think about the line hops in terms of the hips by keeping them in line with the toes. This ensures a straight jump with efficient leg movement. If the feet move forward or backwards, we use a lot more energy and are more likely to fatigue. Hips on top of the toes throughout here. With your push-ups, let's think about the hips as well. Here we're gonna wanna focus on keeping the body in a straight line with the chest in contact with the floor and the hips off. When the hips are in contact with the ground in the bottom, it likely means we've lost core engagement. Keep the belly, butt, and quads squeezed hard so the hips and shoulders move up and down at the same rate. Every push-up is essentially a moving plank. Think core first, push second. With our sit-ups, let's think about the hip position. Although the sit-up is a fairly simple body weight movement, a good setup position allows us to get the most out of this station. Pinning the hips to the floor in the sit-up will allow for full flexion and extension of the abdominals. Even as you're moving fast today, prioritize a solid position with your hips. And then finally on the run, let's think about the knees. Just like in a box jump, this movement involves a lot of landing. The height isn't as high, but the number of times the feet are making contact with the ground is much more frequent than the box jump. It wouldn't make sense to jump and land on the box with locked legs or feet in front of the body. When we land on a box, there is a natural absorption of our body weight through a soft knee bend. Aim for this soft knee bend when running today. The soft knee to absorb each step is easier on the joint and leads to more efficient running. Alright, so a little bit of strategy advice here for spin move. So there's a decent amount of running today, so your run pace will have a big impact on your score. 
but we want to consider running at a pace that allows us to thrive as best as possible on our three rounds when we get back in from those runs. So what I suggest is choose a run pace that you could maintain for somewhere around three to four miles. And then once you get to that last run, let's try to make it a little bit faster than your first run. And then on your three round work inside, as always, whenever we have sit-ups in a workout, we wanna treat those as sort of an active rest, getting us fresh for the other two movements, those push-ups and line hops. And then with those push-ups and line hops, if you see those getting broken up at any point in the workout, go ahead and break them up from the beginning and let's push that fatigue off a little bit further. All right, y'all, make sure you really get after this thing. As always with CrossFit, our goal is to bring intensity to our work. That's how we get our results. And then make sure that you're tracking your progress somehow, whether that's in a notebook or an app like SugarWad. We wanna be showing progress over time. That's how we know we're getting fitter. And then if you plan on coming back to the gym, I cannot wait to coach you in real life.